My name is Stacy Tyrell, and I'm a photo-based artist. Uh, I work in a lot of self-portraiture with costumes and makeup. My work really has to do with the story of like immigration and identity and what it means to sort of be African-Canadian. I've hit a point where I wanted to talk about my identity specifically, and so I went and did one of those DNA tests just to sort of see what would pop up and see if that sort of matched up with what I was told or what I knew about my family. Some of the results were sort of wildly different, sort of pushed me to explore uh, genetically what might be going on and then also interpret those relatives that either that I have out there or who sort of came before me that I have no idea about their histories. That also played with my sort of preconceived notions of not only like who I am, but also my ideas about whiteness and blackness and how they, they sort of relate to each other, especially in post-colonial societies. Not only do I have the ancestors that I know about that were brought over from Africa as slaves to the Caribbean, I also have people in my family tree that came over not only from England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, which I already knew about, but upon doing these tests, there's also people from France, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden. All of these countries were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. All of them owned colonies in the Caribbean and also as a result had indentured servants and then people who immigrated to these parts of the world that then settled and sort of intermingled with the native populations and the local populations and then stayed after abolition. There's a relationship that you sort of develop with yourself. You know, like there's the you that you see, you know, staring at you in the mirror. And then as you begin to add makeup and costumes and things like that, especially in my case where I'm changing my skin color, um, it becomes a very bizarre exercise. And when you sort of hit that point where you're almost ready to go in front of the lens, and you're sort of looking back at this stranger. And for some reason, I find adding the hair to be the most <laughs> disconcerting part. You know, it's like once I, I sort of get that hair piece on, it, it's really strange because even maybe like my mannerisms might slightly change or sort of like what I feel that particular character might embody begins to come through. The characters themselves are sort of stereotypes, I guess, of a particular type of whiteness that I'm interpreting in particular, uh, let's say like upper middle class or middle class. The main thrust of the project is that by simply just changing my skin color and then changing the shape of my nose and my eye color, just to sort of prove the point that if someone were to actually spend time looking at my face, they would actually see the indicators of other things that are genetically there. The basic techniques are things that have been around forever. I look at people like Cindy Sherman or Nikki Lee, who created projects, say, about like 50 and 20, 30 years before I did, and even currently, there's artists that also still work in the same type of medium that I do in terms of interpretive self-portraiture. There might be a little more, I would say acceptance, almost of what it is that I do, just because of these tools for manipulation becoming easier and easier for people to either understand or having the skill set uh, to use. So I'm hoping that also there's an appreciation for that. There's definitely always going to be people that feel what it is that I'm discussing has to do a lot with some sort of self-inflicted hatred almost, which I always find fascinating, and that somehow it's escapism and a fantasy about wanting to become white as opposed to actually discussing whiteness and how like historically it has functioned and also how it functions today. I identify as female and the characters in my work are female, but it's a particular type of femininity that I'm portraying and one that I've seen historically or feel that historically has been oppressive, say, to my type of femininity or black femininity. So I felt it was important that that was all part and parcel of the characters that I created. So on the day of the shoot, I go in and it takes about two hours or so to apply all of the makeup and the costuming and, and then get everything in position. And once you're ready to go on set, there's just minor touch-ups. I do do a lot of research, just in general, because I'm a giant nerd, but then also I just like having it laid out and seeing visually what was sort of going on in particular time periods and sort of drawing pieces from there. I would also look at um, Town and Country magazine. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that one, 
but that that seems to be like the Bible of upper middle class and uh, the rich sort of what they call horsey set. One of the things also that I wanted to convey is that sense of traditional portraiture, like paintings where the eyes seem to follow you no matter what angle you're looking at them. And that almost everything in there is sort of placed there for a reason and that they're sort of indicators of particular either status or wealth or a bit of their personality in each of those scenarios. So actually that picture there is from the latest sort of body of work that I've been working on, just more traditional depictions of like blackness and whiteness, let's say that's like, that's pretty on the nose, but also how traditionally in like different paintings you'll see either as like a status symbol of wealth or whatever, you know, like either a black servant or children sort of with these figures that are having their portraits taken. The message that I hope that people get from my work, first of all, I think that the themes that I'm talking about are universal when it comes to identity and heritage and who it is that we think that we are. And then of course, there is also the racial element in terms of how it's interlinked with identity and how sort of, in my case, blackness sort of interplays with these ideas of whiteness and how really they're sort of Western constructs that we all still live within. All of us are actually more related than we actually think and that we're more interconnected than we think. And just like anything, there's more than meets the eye.